Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse, and today I'm bringing you my January wrap up. We're gonna be talking about all the books I read in the month of January. I had a pretty successful reading month. I read around nine books. I didn't read around nine books. I read nine books, which I know is a decent amount. I know that nine books is a lot of books, but I'm still over here like, I wish I would have read more. And I definitely had time to read more books. I just didn't prioritize reading as much as I should have this month. January is one of those months where it feels like it lasts forever. Like January for me, always feels like two months smushed together. And I feel like I had more than enough time to read more than nine books, but that's all that I got around to, and I'm gonna accept that number and be happy with it. I will say there are a few things that I'm proud of myself for in the month of January in terms of reading, in terms of books. One is utilizing my library more. I've been to the library a couple times this month, and I've really enjoyed just kind of making sure that I work that into my life more. And two, I've been successful with my book buying ban. I mean, I know that we're only a month into the book buying ban, but like, I'm gonna be proud of it, okay? I feel like I can stick it out throughout the whole year. We'll see how that goes. I don't want to get too excited about it because then I feel like I'll just mess it up and I'll ruin the book buying ban, but so far, I'm proud of myself. Let's talk about the books that I read in the month of January. I started out my month by reading Fourth Wing. I had actually started it in December and then finished it in January. This book is one of those books that honestly, for me, I just needed to know what it was all about. I needed to know why people were freaking out over it, why people are obsessing over it, why it's so incredibly hyped, why it's like living on the New York Times bestseller list, like, I just needed to know. I was so curious. It's not necessarily a book that I thought that I was going to really enjoy, just because I know that it's, like, so romance-heavy. And I did, like, enjoy it, but I didn't love it, per se. In it, we are following our main character, Violet, who is attending war college, and she is becoming a dragon rider, and we basically just, like, follow her on that journey and all the highs and lows that come with that. There's also lots more drama involved. There's lots of politics involved. Violet herself does not have the best reputation because of her mother. Her mother doesn't have the best reputation, and so that kind of bleeds onto Violet herself. It was so hard to go into this book without my expectations being high in the sky, but they were up there, flying around with the dragons. I didn't connect to it as much as I hoped that I would. I felt like the dialogue was just incredibly cringe, and I was getting secondhand embarrassment with each chapter. I was just like, <gasps> when is it gonna let up on the secondhand embarrassment? Like, when am I gonna be able to read this and not, like, feel like I'm dying inside as I'm reading it? You're following a character who is constantly having thoughts about how everyone around her is in incredibly hot. And that for me is where the cringe came in. She was so thirsty and it was just like so hard reading her thoughts and having her be like, oh my god, this guy's hot. Oh my god, that guy's hot. He's so hot. I'm just like, girl, stop it. Stop. For me, it was a book that had a very strong start, struggled in the middle, but then kind of like really reels you in and hooks its claws into you by the end of it with all the reveals that come flooding in. Like, I get the hype. I get why so many people are invested in the story. I just don't think in particular it's for me. And that's okay. I feel like I feel iffy about the romanticy genre as a whole. Like, I just don't think that romanticy is for me. I say that though, and one of my favorite books from the month of January was a romanticy, so I just think maybe it just depends on the romance element within the fantasy story. It is a very nostalgic feeling read though, and that's something that I really liked about it. It reminded me of a lot of like early 2000 reads. It serves all the fun vibes, and if you're somebody that like really likes that sort of push and pull romantic relationship within a book, it serves on that front as well. I think if the writing itself was a little bit stronger, then I too would kind of be riding out the fourth wing hype wave, but unfortunately I'm going to be hopping off at the hater station and staying here and allowing y'all to just like keep riding that love wave. Like, keep riding the love train into the night throughout the rest of the series. I just do not see myself committing to the rest of the series. I've heard not so great things about the second book, Iron Flame, and just overall, I just don't think this is for me. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Overall for me, it was a three out of five star rating. <sighs> coffee break. Next up, I read Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong. In this book, we are following our main character, June, who is an author, and she just has not had the best career in terms of writing. She's always dreamed of being a best-selling author, having her books constantly sell out and garner hype, but it's just never happened for her. One of her friends, on the other hand, though, Athena, has had this crazy, amazing career. She's a bestseller, her books constantly sell out, they're in high demand, and our main character, June, finds herself to be a little bit jealous. After her friend Athena dies, in this freak accident, June ends up snatching up one of her manuscripts and publishing it as her own. That's all I will say in terms of the description for this book, but this book was so dang good. Albeit, it's a frustrating read. Like, there were moments where I was getting so mad at the main character and just, like, feeling such rage within me, but that's the whole point of the book. One, you're not supposed to like the main character. I feel like I've seen lots of people, like, critique the main character and be like, she's so unlikable, and I'm over here like, hello, that's the point of the book! You're not supposed 
supposed to like her? The main character is incredibly unlikable throughout the whole journey, and she's all the time like gaslighting herself into trying to convince herself that she's a good person, when in fact you'd be able to find her on a list of the most terrible people within the world. Her writing style is incredibly gripping and addictive, and I feel like when you're in it, like it's just so hard to look away. You just like want to stay in it, keep reading, and reach the end and find out what the heck this main character ends up doing next, because like it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Like you think it's gotten to the worst point, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. I know that this book is technically classified as a thriller. It does have very thrillery moments, but I never felt like it was falling fully into the thriller world. But all that to say, I want RF Kuang to freaking write a thriller. Like, I need the full-fledged, on a platter, thriller delivered to me ASAP. Like, I need it so bad. Like, after reading this book, I was like craving a thriller from RF Kuang, because her writing style is just so addictive, I couldn't look away, and I just need that with a thriller. I need her to come out with a thriller. Stat. My only complaint is some of the things that happened in the end. It just felt like over dramatic, a little bit too much at times, and it just didn't feel like super fitting to the story. But overall, I gave this book a four out of five stars. I loved it. Every bit of it. Another banger from the queen, R.F. Kong. She's for sure become an auto buy author for me. Like she writes it, I read it. I'm there. You've got me, girl. I'm in your corner. I still need to read Babel, but like, I still feel like you're amazing and one of my faves now. Coffee break. <sighs> Next I read Spare by Prince Harry. This is just about Prince Harry's life as a royal, his time at the palace, his thoughts on his mom, and kind of exploring his grief, meeting Meghan and their relationship and their marriage, and then talking about leaving the royal family, essentially. I felt like this was an enjoyable read for me and the fact that, like, honestly, I didn't know that much about the royal family before reading this, and it was just, like, very eye-opening. It was like, the lights were off for me in terms of the royal family, and Prince Harry came through and just, like, flipped that switch. And now I feel like I'm a little bit more in the know and it's just such a fascinating world. This was a little bit on the over detailed side for my liking. Like there were times where I was like, Prince Harry, where are we getting at with this? Like I get that he wanted to share more about his life outside of just being royal and like I get that, I'm here for that, but there were just some storylines throughout this that I was just like, what is this adding? Also there are some things that do not need to be shared. There are some things that we don't need to know and yes I am in fact talking about the frostbitten PP. It's mostly a book that made me sad and yes I do recognize the fact that Prince Harry is very privileged. Like I get that. But him talking about his family and his life just made me sad because it's just like not a normal family. Like a normal family does not leak news stories about you to the press. A normal family does not care more about their reputation over their relationship with you. And then I just feel bad for him in the fact that like he's never known privacy and will probably never know privacy. He will always have a camera in his face and will always have stories written about him. He will always be on magazine covers and I just can't imagine the strain of that on your life. Like having that be your life since literal birth. Like your mother giving birth to you and her having to go and stand on the steps of the hospital and have photographers take your picture. Like, I just can't imagine that. I can't imagine what that does to you mentally. Overall, I really enjoyed the reading process of this. I don't rate memoirs because it feels like you're giving a star rating to someone's life and I just don't feel comfortable doing that. But overall, I did really enjoy this one. It was a little bit over detailed at times, but all in all, a fun read. I had a fun time with it. Coffee soup. Next up, I read Happy Place by Emily Henry. In this book, we were following this couple. We've got Wynn and Harriet. They actually ended up breaking up. They haven't told their friends yet. Harriet ends up being invited to this cottage in Maine that is their friend group's like happy place. They share so many memories and good times at this happy place. And the last person that she thinks she's going to end up seeing at this happy place is Wynn. But when she gets there, what do you know? Wynn is there, which makes things very complicated because obviously they broke up. They haven't told their friends. All of their friends are there. So they're having to pretend that they're in a relationship. When I tell you I was shocked by how much I love this book, I mean, I was shocked. Like I really enjoyed Book Lovers by Emily Henry. That's the first book that I ever read by her. But this one blew that one out of the water for me. Book Lovers Who? I only know Happy Place by Emily Henry. Henry. I'm quite literally obsessed and I don't know how she does it. Now, I must say that my opinion is not like the popular opinion. Since talking about this book online, a lot of people have been like, I really didn't like that book. I respect you liking it, but like respectfully, that's not her best. But that's okay. To each their own. This one has me quite literally in a chokehold and I will accept that. If anybody knows a number that I can call to help me stop thinking about these characters, please drop it down below in the comments because I can't stop thinking about these characters. The writing of the tension between the two love interests was executed so well. 
well. The author does a fantastic job of getting you to care about this couple that's split up and gets you to like just root for them and want them to be together. And then coming through and revealing like why they split up and just like breaking your heart over and over again. All of that just came through and rocked my world. It's not even like it's that new of a story concept, but like just the way it was written, mm -mm -mm, she did that so good. Am I becoming an Emily Henry stan? Is that the scenario here? I didn't know that that's what I signed up for when I started this book, but that's what appears to be happening here. I don't know how I feel about that. Anyway, I give it a five out of five stars. I know that that's like a rather unpopular opinion, but like I loved it. It's so good. And you can't change my mind at all. I moved from one five star read to another five star read, and that is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. In this book, we are following a lot of characters truthfully, but the elevator pitch here is we are following Jack, who makes his way back to his home islands after hearing the fact that these young girls keep going missing. It's believed that the spirits of the island are involved in this, and Jack is a bard and will be able to like play music and basically summon the spirits and talk to them. And so Jack is called home in order to help with this mission. But the catch is he's going to have to be working alongside one of his enemies, one of his childhood enemies. Together they set their differences aside and work together to summon the spirits and get more information surrounding these girls that are going missing. There's a lot more to it and honestly I need to sit down and refine my pitch for this book because I want everyone ever to read it because I loved it. Five out of five stars. I've been hearing great things about Rebecca Ross's books but I had never expected to like find myself falling in love with one and then I picked up A River Enchanted and I was like instantly in love. This is a romanticy, but I would question if it should be called a romanticy. Like, I feel like it's just a fantasy story that has, like, a romance element. It doesn't, like, consume the story, which is something that I really appreciated about it. I appreciated the fact that the romance itself was, like, really subtle. It's more so focused on the mystery surrounding the missing girls, and we have, like, lots of layers to the story, because we get to see the journey of a lot of characters and get to see different angles of the story and different sides of the story to kind of, like, really shape things out. And that's something that I just really loved about this book. I wasn't really expecting there to be quite a few characters that we follow throughout the story, but I just felt like they all brought such unique layers to the story, and I loved that about it. And then, like, the writing style itself, I was so moved by the writing style. Like, I was emotional at times reading this book because of how well written it was. It just felt like every word was chosen with so much thought, and it just felt like everything was intentional and just so well crafted, and I just... Oh, I just felt like Rebecca Ross has just so much respect for the craft of writing, and it shines through with her own writing style. Like, I'm shook. She's such a good writer. I need to read more by her ASAP, because if her other books are anything like this one, we've got a new favorite author on our hands. The writing style is incredibly atmospheric and immersive, and I had like an out-of-body experience while reading this book. Like, I fully felt like my soul leave my body and enter this book, <laughs> which I know sounds like I must have been on something when I was reading this book, but I promise I wasn't. This book alone got me high. I'm clean as can be. The characters all had so much depth and were just so interesting. And then I also just like loved the spirit aspect of the world. That alone just like had me swept away into it because I was just like so fascinated by it. It was almost like eerie and creepy at times, but also just like very magical. It's one of those books that I know I'm going to look back on and be like, ah, oh, I wish I could go back to the first time I read that book. Like, I just wanted to bottle up the feeling I was feeling when I was reading it and just keep it forever and be able to, like, revisit that feeling, because... It's been a moment since I've had a book move me in this way. <laughs> That's how strongly I felt about it, and y'all better prepare yourself because you're about to be sick of me and the fact that I'm gonna not stop talking about this book for the next five to ten years, so... I apologize, but also, I'm not sorry. If it wasn't clear, I gave this book a full-on 5 out of 5 stars. Perfect, magnificent, enchanting, just all of the feelings! Next up here, we've got a library read, and that is The Famous Magician. I randomly stumbled across this in the library, and this line on the back instantly had me intrigued. It says, an author is offered a devil's bargain. Will he give up reading and writing books in exchange for total world domination? Like, I read that line, was immediately sold, took it straight up to the counter, and checked it out. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, though, it was not everything that I'd hoped it would be. I think, honestly, one of the problems with this book is that it just is too short. And I tried to, like, go into it knowing that it's a short story. It's not a novel. This is definitely, like, a novella situation. So I tried to go in recognizing the fact that it probably doesn't have enough time to really execute it in the way that I want it to be executed. But it just ended up being a bit of a letdown. I will say that I really enjoyed the writing style, albeit it is a little bit on the pretentious side of things at times. But I still really enjoyed it. And there were things that were brought up in this book 
book that I really appreciated and I really liked kind of going down the rabbit hole and exploring these ideas in my mind as I was reading about them. Ideas of like, if I was given this opportunity, would I take it? And also just like discussion on things that matter in life, things that don't matter, things that we take for granted in our life, and just other topics like that were kind of like popping up in my mind as I was reading this book and I really liked that aspect of it. But overall I just felt like the story had potential and it never really fully reached its potential. Had it been kind of pushed to maybe like even the 200 page mark I feel like it could have fleshed it out so much more. But it's mostly us just following this guy going back and forth on his decision and that alone was just like not that interesting. But I also felt like that was kind of the point of this book was to just follow a guy who is going back and forth on his decision and figuring out what he wants to do. Um, that was such an awkward, that looked like I was like dancing or something. This is, uh, uh, what am I doing? Overall, I didn't like this one. I gave it a two out of five stars. Coffee break, coffee break, give me a sip. <sighs> That sip. <laughs> Next up, we've got another library read, and that is Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. This is one that I just randomly saw on the shelf, and after reading the description, I was intrigued. I feel like the description for this one does not really give you the best idea as to what you're actually getting, but in it we are following this main character whose family was killed by this monster called the Mant Manticore? Manticore. Manticore. And in this world, there are people that work with rocks, which are basically these like bird-like creatures, as you can see on the book cover. And it's basically a us just like following our main character's journey with that rock and training the rock and becoming friends with other trainers and working with royalty and kind of like championing this creature that can help take down these big massive monsters, the Manticores. This was the first book that I read by Fonda Lee despite the fact that I have the Jade City trilogy and I've yet to read it. And I did not expect to love this as much as I did, though there's a part of me that like really longed for this to kind of be expanded into a series. Like I could envision this being like a novella series like the Every Heart of Doorways series and just like exploring more characters and their journeys with the rocks and encountering the manticore because there was just so much potential here and so many great characters. There were so many great like action-packed scenes, so many intense scenes and you just like really feel the intensity. They were so well written and just like had you feeling kind of the full scope of encountering and taking down these like nasty beasts. And then there are just like a lot of like sweet moments between the characters. There are some like tough character moments too though where they like feel betrayed by each other but just like so many sweet friendships and so many great like bonding moments because you're following all these characters that are on their own journeys with rocks and they're all like bonding over working with their rocks and learning from each other and there's just so many like sweet relationships i say so many there's like a few not a lot but like Enough for me, it filled up my love tank, okay? I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. For some reason, I just can't like fully bump it up to a 5 star read. Like it just was not like a full 5 star, but like I still really enjoyed it and I highly recommend checking this one out. And I want more from this world immediately. Next up, I read God Killer. This is a book where I read the description and I thought that I knew what I was getting myself into, but then I got into it and I was like, <laughs> I had no idea. It was basically pitched to me about a girl whose family gets killed by these gods and she ends up up becoming a god killer in order to get revenge and like that is an element of one of the characters but the thing is you're following four point of views throughout this story so it ends up being about these four characters that come together to work together we've got the god killer we've got a god a young noble and a knight and they are going on a quest together essentially i just had no idea going into this that we would be following four characters and that we would get each of their point of views but that's exactly what this book delivered and i wasn't necessarily like mad at it like by the end of the book i had grown sort of a love situation for these characters and I do consider them to be my babies now so that happened. I surprisingly or maybe unsurprisingly I don't know just found myself so invested in these characters. It's one of those books though where it kind of goes back and forth between having these like really captivating scenes. The action scenes in this book are some of the best I've seen in a while and yet outside of those action scenes those really grand extravagant scenes it was dry as can be. I was like how are you gonna have these incredibly gripping scenes and then have the rest of it respectfully be dry dry dry. There were also some things at the end that had me a bit annoyed and I don't know if it's a situation where I need to go back and reread it. I'm not going to be rereading it anytime soon and kind of like pick up on the seeds that were being planted to get to this like end thing happening. But regardless, I was just a little bit annoyed by one of the reveals that took place. Overall, I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was a fun time and I would recommend it. Finally, the last book that I read is another library read and that is This Appearing House. In this book, we are following our main character, Jack, who has been on a bit of a cancer journey, but she feels like she's on the end of it and she's really hoping she will be declared Ned, which means no evidence of disease. Basically, she will be cancer free. But then 
she sees this house at this dead end that has never been there before and she's like am I seeing things like is my cancer back and is it causing me to see things so she kind of starts to like freak herself out but then somebody ends up daring her to go into the house and when she goes in she's unable to get out and so we follow her with some of her friends within this house as they try to find their way out of it this was a really well written middle grade story and I really enjoyed like the house itself like that was the most enjoyable part for me like I just thought it was so interesting it definitely has like a lot of symbolism and reflects sort of Jack's experiences with cancer and some of the trauma that she faced on that journey and I just love seeing that be reflected through the house it was such an interesting take on sort of like facing your fears facing your traumas and allowing yourself to feel the anger that comes with those things I really enjoyed it I thought it was a middle grade read that had a lot of depth to it and I really appreciated that about it I have two complaints one there was like some cheesy writing bits throughout this in terms of like it trying to be really meaningful sometimes translated into preachy and I just never really loved that there was a specific clay analogy broken clay analogy that just felt a little cheesy, a little over the top, a little dramatic. And then my other gripe is that I just did not connect to the characters and I feel like I would have been impacted so much more by what actually happened in this book had I grown an attachment to the characters. But I never reached that point, unfortunately. But overall, I still enjoyed it. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and I would recommend it if you're interested in a unique middle grade story. Those were the nine books that I read in the month of January. I feel like I can't complain because I'm hitting the ground running this year with two five stars out the gate. Like, I can't be mad. I'm super excited excited about that. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. I'd love to hear from you guys if you haven't read any of these books and just let me know down below in the comments some books that you read in the month of January and if you have any recommendations for me. I'm always looking for recommendations. If you like this video be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. I'm gonna go sip my coffee. Bye. Oh. <laughs>